in verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her first, her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now we're going to Matthew chapter two. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod heard the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the prince of Judea. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. When Herod, then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, Bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and mirth. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to her, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And there was until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was broken, or spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, 
was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently <laughs> inquired the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforter, because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus had did reign in Judea, in the, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelled in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called the Nazarene. Going to Luke chapter 2 now. And it came to pass in those days that, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with great haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they seen it, they made known about the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they had heard, it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorified, and praising God for the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the, the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb.
Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, with thanks. That God sent his only begotten Son, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all he did when he walked here on this earth, Lord. Father, most of all, we thank you, Lord, that he went to the cross. Lord, to die for our sins. Lord, we're most thankful, Lord, that he rose on the third day and ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father. I would just want to praise and honor Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our King this morning, Lord. Father, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, this is one of the two most precious times of the year. That's when Christ was born. And that's when Christ was crucified, died for our sins, and rose again. You know, Herod was an evil man. He was jealous of Jesus. And he done everything in his power that he knew to do to try to kill Jesus. The Bible says he killed every child from two years old down in the city of Bethlehem trying to get to Jesus. God had other plans for Jesus. By sending an angel <coughs> and giving Joseph the dream to arrive and go into the land of Egypt. Yet this world, as we know it, is still <coughs> trying to do away with the very deity of Jesus Christ. Our government is so rampant on doing away with Christianity. And that ain't nothing but Satan. Satan is probably the, well, I know he is. He's, he's the maddest person on earth because he can't gain what he wants to do. And he attacks us on every side. Every time he finds a little crack, he enters that crack and tries to defeat us. But I got news for Satan. We belong to Jesus. He can't touch us. He can't harm us. I thank God for sending Jesus. <laughs> First to be our Savior. <coughs> and to die on the cross for our sins. So that each one of us could have eternal life. I ain't no Bible scholar. I don't know. I don't know how the saints before Christ I mean they couldn't be saved because there wasn't no Savior. I don't know exactly how they lived for God, because the Bible plainly tells us that there was men, godly men, before Jesus. <coughs> there was Job, there was Abraham. And I believe that they're in heaven. Among the many others. I mean, I just mentioned two, but there was countless godly men and women before Christ. I believe that they're in heaven because they carried out God's work 
and they believed in God. And then when I get to heaven, I guess I'll understand it. <laughs> How they made it to heaven without being saved. Well, you're a preacher. You're supposed to know these things. I ain't studied that deep yet to figure things out. Hopefully God will uh, sacrifice an animal. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that a couple of Sundays ago, didn't we? Yeah. In the Sunday school. Yeah. But, you know, things that we don't understand here on earth, I believe once we get to heaven, we'll be able to understand. God will, God will show us every question we have as far as what we don't understand. And there's things in the Bible I think is not meant to understand. But all of that will be revealed once we get to heaven. <laughs> and on this day, I want us to take about two minutes just silently pray. Don't pray when nobody can hear you. Just pour your heart out to God and thank Him for sending His Son so that we can have everlasting life. You can't make it enough. Amen. Anybody got a testimony this morning? Yeah. Anybody, anybody got anything on your heart this morning?
Like the old Savior. Amen. <coughs> Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for all you've done for us. You know, you keep thanking us. You know, it helps you on that day. Just say thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. Amen. <coughs> You know, 2020 has got to be the worst year that we've ever known. I mean, I'm sure there was other pandemics that were just as bad, but that was before our time, or before my time. Uh, there might have been some. I think there was a pandemic back in the 30s, wasn't there? Where uh, was it malaria broke out or something? Flu with smallpox. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. But uh, I'm too young to remember that one. <laughs> but Jerry, there was the polio. Remember that back then? Yep. When was that? We all went to schoolhouse, you know, and got the cube and sugar pubes back then. Yeah. Back in the 50s. Back in the 60s. 50s, 60s, right? Yeah. Okay, back in the 50s. Everybody in town. I'm too young to remember that one. I know they give it to everybody in town. I don't know about other places. But uh, that's pretty bad. A lot of people got it. Yeah. (coughs) But for me, 2020s, I'd have to say, is my worst year. I'm sure there's others who would say that. It'll go down um, in history, that's for sure. Yeah, it will. I'm looking forward to 2021. I'm looking forward to things getting better. Yes. Um, I'm looking for Jesus to come in 2021. I look for him in 2020. I look for him in 1990. Or not. 2019, yeah, I'll get it right in a minute. But I've been looking for him ever since I've been trying to walk the straight and narrow way. I've been looking for him. And he ain't come yet. I'm not <laughs> giving that. Because he promised he'd come back. And God don't break promises. It may be 2025 when he comes. But I'm looking for him in 2021, just like I did in 2020. Because I'm longing to go home. I'm longing to see my Savior face to face, eye to eye, and thank him in person for all these things to me. I'm glad there ain't going to be no time in between now. Because it's going to take me a long time to thank Jesus for everything he's done for me. And I know he'll have time to listen. He'll, he'll have time to listen to all of us. I, I don't have a clue how long it would take for me to thank Jesus for everything he's done for me. It's going to be in your head. Gonna be the main thing ever. No, <laughs> God has been so good. You got the rest of your life, huh? You did that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are we gonna do this? You wanna do some presents? Or? You wanna do presents first? Doesn't matter. You probably can. And since there's only 11 of us here today, there's enough bags for everybody to have at least two bags of peace. Yeah, for us, really, you want to come out the bread? Come on. I don't have any of us. Yeah, tomorrow night.
Finally, the nurses come in and said, you got to go away. You got to take her to mama. <laughs> of course, Beth and mama had a hard time with their delivery. Beth didn't about to make it, and then her mama about blessed Beth before they could get her stopped. So I'm really thankful. Every time I look at Beth, I have to thank God. He was watching over me. Okay. Amen. Yeah. I'm not going to dismiss. If you guys want to fellowship with all that, fine. But just come back next Sunday. Come back prayed up. That's what the Greek book. There you go. <laughs> There's that <another> year. <laughs> but y'all are welcome to stay as long as you want to. Just Fellowship with each other. Yeah. Have a great Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.